Hello, this is Dr. Scott McLean, and during this video, we'll be showing you how to make a screwmentable crown. The screwmentable crown is a crown that is kind of put together with cement outside of the mouth and then screwed in place. On this case, we're going to be using a on one zeal abutment. It's kind of a anodized gold color, and this enables the tissues to be sealed at the time of surgery. And then we're going to come back and use a universal base and show you how to kind of bond the zirconia crown to this universal base. By far, my favorite one is the 0.3 millimeter uh, universal base, and this is used to support the screwmentable crown. So once you bond these two together, you can see that these two become one and then it gets screwed in place. So this enables you to have this substructure, but also then prevent any kind of uh, cement from getting into the area. After three months of healing, the patient's going to return and then have a enteral scan. And then we put this uh, file into DTX Studio Lab, where my dental technician is going to fabricate a zirconia crown that will be subsequently bonded to the universal base. So this crown can be made of any type of zirconia, but we center it, also stain and glaze it, and then he'll return it so that uh, it's all prepared. And typically we're going to print a model to make the screwmentable crown. You can see here Mike, my lab technician, working on creating an articulated model so that we can do this. And so most of the crown is, is made in the computer, but we still have to make a model. We will use the Sprint Ray printer to print an articulated model with the hinge and everything all together so that we can start to bond the screwmentable crown. The Sprint Ray printer is a very high resolution printer that also prints extremely fast and we're going to print this STL file and you can see the spot for the implant replica to go in. Now you have to have a special replica and we'll go over that in a minute. But When we make this file we're going to spend about an hour and 19 minutes printing this. So not too long. We have it on high resolution. So we'll start the magic and you can see that the tray is now dipping down and uh, starting the process. So this is a DLP printer meaning that it's going to kind of print in layers instead of tracing. So once this gets finished, we can see that the two models are on the nest and they're printed on little uh, scaffolds and they'll be scraped off, cleaned and rinsed and, and then they'll be blasted with light just to make sure they're polymerized. Let's have a look at the on one intraoral scan replicas. These are used for printed models to represent the platform of the on one abutment. So it's not the implant itself, it's the abutment since this abutment has been placed and we're taking an impression of that. So you would have used a intraoral scan and you have to kind of then take this replica and use the insertion tool to place it into the model. Now the model has been printed so that this is going to have a seating point. So it's going to have a point that tells you you're in the right orientation. So there's a trioval kind of area. And then it's going to seat down until it's flat with the internal aspect of this uh, you know, printed model. So you can see you have to kind of understand how that's going to be printed. Then we'll take off the insertion tool and just check to make sure that that screw is in place. So a couple things. You have to make sure you ask whoever's doing the impression what, what height of abutment that they use for the intro scan because there's different heights and of course then the wide platform would also be the thing you have to ask what size platform are you using because this is representing the on one abutment now rather than the implant platform depth so now we have everything we need to fabricate the crown and so we have this printed model that's now articulated based on the hinge that has been printed with the model and so this can easily be done and then we also have the ability to look at how much height we have. We will then open the titanium on one universal abutment. And then this will be screwed down on top of that replica that we just placed into the model. So this is an on one universal abutment 0.3 and 0.3 is my favorite. So this kind of gets screwed down on top and then we're going to start to fabricate a zirconia crown. So zirconia is usually my favorite here because it's so strong. 
and you can see that this makes an ideal very thick piece of zirconia that's going to be supported by a titanium shoulder and so this is extremely strong and uh, very long term for the implant. So our goal is to bond these two together. So we're going to use some imprint four first to do some block out. And so we're going to block the channel out so that we don't have the restorative cement go into this area. So we'll use the replica as a handle in this case which enables us to kind of grab onto things because it's very small and tiny when you're doing some of this, these steps. And so this little handle makes sense. So we pull this out and we're first going to take some imprint four and we'll put this into the channel so we can block this out. Now you can use any color you want, but I like pink because I can see it really well when I'm picking this back out after we've done the bonding. So we'll take a gauze and just wipe it off so it's really only on the occlusal aspect of this abutment and uh, we're going to be ready for sandblasting. So looking at the abutment, you can see it has some wings on the side. These are anti-rotational. It also has a shoulder and the shoulder is going to be enabling us to have zirconia sit down on the shoulder and make it so that it's really fully supported even though you could really drive a truck over the zirconia crown and you're not going to kind of hurt it at all because it's so thick. We then will sandblast the abutment with 50 micron 35 psi sand and so what we're going to do is to kind of etch this. This will make the bonding a little bit more solid and so we'll also do the intaglio surface of the crown so staying up in the areas where this is going to sit down on the abutment and you also have to do the shoulder because the shoulder is also going to be sitting on the abutment so we want to have this bonded just as well as the uh, kind of cylinder as well so this just takes a few minutes to do and this makes a huge difference in the bonding strength so the micro etching is uh, really important to increase the surface area of the bonding and the cementation process so here they're ready for cleaning up now. We will then wash both the universal base abutment as well as the zirconia crown with alcohol. This is important to remove the residue from the sand when you're doing the sandblasting and just to make it kind of clean and pure for bonding. So we'll do a cleanse on the zirconia crown inside and also on the border of the margin as well because there's going to be a margin that sits down on the universal base. We'll also clean the titanium uh, universal base with the alcohol as well just to make sure that it's ready for bonding and so we'll take this around the marginal area and you can see the etch of this now so it's not shiny anymore. Then we'll take some water and just wash it off which is uh, just a quick step to make sure any and a residue is gone from the alcohol. So now our step will be to bond these two together. So we're going to be using some adhesive and cement to do this step. And what we'll be using is some Scotch Bond Universal Plus. And there's some properties about this that make it really good. The dispensing is good, but it's about the MDP and the silane in this adhesive that are going to help us out when we're bonding this screwmentable crown and you can see that um, when we're using this we're going to dispense a little bit out and start to make this so that we get the exact amount we need so I slowed this down a little bit because you can see one drop is more than enough to do this procedure now we're going to do a 20 second scrub so when you're scrubbing this you're preparing the surface for bonding and applying the adhesive itself. So the adhesive is then got the MDP and the silane in necessary to bond the zirconia. And so when we put this in scrub, it's actually preparing the surface so that you'll be able to uh, get those two structures bonded together. So now let's take the second structure, which is the tie base. It's the universal base abutment from the on one system and so we give this a 20 second scrub as well 
Now you want to take the uh, air syringe and dry the adhesive so that it doesn't have any pooling and it doesn't have any thickness to it. Because you want this to be uh, as manufacturer recommends, which is thin and dried out. And so to get rid of that kind of extra layer of the adhesive is important. And you'll do this on the zirconia crown as well. It's also important to do the 20 second scrub on the intaglio surface of the zirconia. So you can see here I'm going you know, pretty hard at it and making sure that the adhesive is really getting into that micro etch surface. It's also critical that we dry the zirconia surface from the adhesive as well. So you want this uh, extra layer to be kind of thinned out. So this demonstrates up close the kind of pooling that occurs. And you want to get this thinned right out so that it's dry and you don't see this kind of shiny surface. So this is an uh, important step to follow through on to make sure you're getting a really good bond with the cement. I feel it's important to have this assembly on the printed model when you're cementing this so that you can ensure that the position of the crown is in the perfect spot because there is a tiny little bit of room when you're going to put this together and that's going to be the room that the cement will take up. We'll be using some Reliax Universal Cement and this has got this really unique syringe. When you take this you can put the tip on which is offset by 45 degrees and when we put the tip on we turn it down so the 90 degree turn snaps it in position just like this and that opens the syringe. There's little valves inside so then when you dispense it you just push it through like this and we're going to have it mixing in the orange tip. So you'll express a little bit to start. This is important to do just to get that homogenous type of mix at the end of the tip. And then you'll start to fill up the crown. And so you wanted to fill this in this particular situation. But this emphasizes why using a screwmentable crown is so important. Because we've put this crown in the mouth on a flat abutment that's in the uh, junctional epithelium area. And this is going to cause cement irritation down the road. So here we can put it on a model, take it off the model, clean up the cement and this is one of the nice things about this cement is it's very easily cleaned and we'll use a small micro brush to clean down to that pink polyvinyl siloxane that we put inside. So once we see this color we know that we've cleaned it out well. But easy to clean up, uh, easy to use, nice tip that you can express it exactly where you want to go so it's very controlled it's uh, a nice product I like using it this is a dual cure product but I like to use a deep curing light to still set this so that I keep this in place so we're gonna use our deep curing light here and we'll give it a good zap so meanwhile the cement is setting and the cement is initiating the adhesive so this is a unique product that will do the two at once so you can't necessarily use another type of uh, cement to do this but if you use the product from the same manufacturer it will initiate the adhesive so therefore you do not have to cure the adhesive at the first stage this is kind of critical because we don't want any pooling we don't want this not to sit down and so this makes it so that the two become very homogeneous and very kind of hard but at the same time it can still be really cleaned up and this is the cleanup that I like it's uh, super easy so we can get in and do that light cure and then take it off and then get up underneath and really clean this now that the light cure has happened we can then take an explorer and then pick out that uh, pink polyvinyl siloxane and this will enable us to get back to the screw so therefore that's why we put it in there because we didn't want the cement to go down through that channel of the on one universal base so now once we pick this out you can see the small amount that's there and it makes it simple you just have to have something to go down that channel so that you don't fill that channel up with cement we will then take a universal driver and unscrew the crown off of the printed model and this will enable us to do some curing underneath the uh, surface because you're actually curing down deep which you would never be able to do in the mouth you have to rely on the dual cure there but then it also allows us to clean it up that's the kind of critical factor is the cleanup so we can clean up any cement that's sticking out 
kind of polish it down and get it ready for long-term use. One of my favorite features about the on one system is it seals the implant at the time of surgery. Then this also allows us to keep the cement out of that area because we're using a screwmentable crown and so you're able to take the crown on and off and make sure there's no cement down there. So it's a beautiful system and uh, the other thing that never hurts is it costs uh, relatively less money to make this type of system because you're making a zirconia crown on a stock abutment. Now typically I don't want to do cemented stock abutments unless they are screwmentable. And screwmentable can give us here a ability to cement it and to use stock abutments to have a platform shift to have a really strong crown with lots of marginal ridge support and so this is an outstanding type of product and with me I think that this is my own implant and we've been working on this and you can see that during this procedure today there is my zeal abutment this is what we've been just kind of building this crown for and over the years it's actually been outstanding you can see at 18 months the crown how it looks at 2.5 years the bone is just staying at a zero bone loss concept so if you like this video please like it and show me down show me some love and if you can subscribe we can show you the next videos coming up take care